Today is grocery day, and on days that I get my groceries, I like to spend some time in my kitchen. I have some meals in mind for the next couple of days, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a few things to prep for those ahead of time. Me and my husband have four little kids under the age of seven, so anytime I can spend a little bit of time in the kitchen getting some things made, it just helps things so much. It's really nice when you have little kids that need to be fed and they're hungry, and you can just pull something out that's actually healthy for them and give them that. So I like to make sure that they have healthy options, that they actually want to eat already ready to go in my fridge and I'm going to make a few things including a dish that I need to make for church tomorrow because every week we all have a potluck together and so everyone will kind of bring a dish and we all share and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that tomorrow so I'll show you guys that as well so let me go ahead and show you my grocery haul for this week I got three bags of frozen corn. This is great for soups or just to have as a side for the kids, especially just like butter, salt, they like that. And I'll also throw it in soups or even like salads and stuff like that. Also got one bag of frozen cauliflower and this is actually gonna go in something that I'm gonna be making later today. The next thing that I always make sure to have plenty of is meat. So I got two big packages of grass-fed ground beef. This is 85% lean. We actually want that fat, that's good fat and it helps stabilize your blood sugar. So these are each two pounds. So I got four pounds of ground beef. Um, organic free-range chicken breast, free-range chicken thighs, as well as some of the pasture bird drumsticks. And the drumsticks I'm actually going to be using to make my homemade chicken stock. It's so easy. And this package was only, I think it was only like three something. So it's pretty inexpensive too to make a whole bunch of homemade stock. And that's perfect for the winter time too because I'm going to be making a couple soups this week. You can also use it to make things like rice really flavorful. So I always make sure to have chicken like this on hand to make that stock. Another thing I like to do is I like to just take all the meat that I buy at the store that week and I just put it in the fridge for now and then maybe today or tomorrow I'll go through and kind of plan out maybe some ideas that I have for the week. I'll leave the meat in there and then I'll just freeze what I don't plan on using. So I'll kind of do a little bit of meal planning after I get all the groceries, think about what I want to make, and then I'll freeze whatever I'm not going to be using in the next like three days and everything else will stay in the fridge usually in like a little dish or something like that. That way it's not like you know running raw meat juice everywhere so that's a good tip is just put it all in the fridge don't go straight to the freezer put it in the fridge first and then plan it out what you want to do for the week and of course with little kids in the house I have to have a ton of milk so I just buy this kind um, I do prefer the 100% grass-fed milk but it's like twice the price right now so I'm going with this instead and it's still organic it's still pasture raised and so I get about three half gallons of that for the week and that will usually last us and then I also got two things of sour cream just because I need one for a recipe and then the other one I'll just have on hand for whatever we want it for. My favorite coconut yogurt. This is really good. I've been eating a ton of this lately. I also love this one and my kids love it too. This is the Strauss brand, just organic regular yogurt. And yeah, so that's it for dairy. Oh, actually one more thing. I picked up one of these chocolate milks because my kids love chocolate milk, but I don't really like to buy the ones that are like 2% or 1% or low fat chocolate milks. And I like this one in particular because it's organic and it's whole milk, chocolate milk from grass fed cows. And it's a low temperature pack so it's closer to raw milk. So I bought them one little thing of this and I'll kind of dilute it with some regular whole milk and they'll have that as a little treat. And in case you guys are wondering, I don't have eggs in my grocery haul today and that is because I get our eggs from my mom. She lives about 10 minutes away from us and she has, I don't even know, maybe like 30, 40 chickens. And so we get all of our eggs from her. So I always have a ton of these in my fridge. Also one more protein that I got for this week is some wild caught cod. I'm a huge fan of fish, although it is not that affordable right now, but I just bought a little bit of it because I like to include that in our diet for the rich omega-3. You can also get fish at places like your farmer's market if you live near the coast. I can get people who bring back that fish from the coast straight to our farmer's market. So that is something I will be doing a lot more often when I do buy fish. So I also picked up some bacon. This doesn't have added sugar. I picked up a little bit of chicken sausage some uncured hot dogs. I believe this is Wagyu or Wag, Wagyu. I don't know how you say that, but this is really good quality. It's not your typical hot dog. 
And then I also picked up some grass-fed, 100% grass-fed beef hot dogs. And this is just something I have on hand sometimes in the fridge just to have something a little extra for my kids. I picked up lots and lots of produce today. This is not a time of year where I'm getting anything from my garden and there's not very much at the farmer's market. And so most of my produce is coming from the grocery store. So I picked up some celery. This is for stock. I always pick up organic greens. That's a must. Um, asparagus, some scallions, broccoli, their little sugar snap peas. I love to snack on these with hummus or throw them into a stir fry. Green beans. This is a coleslaw mix that I make my little cabbage salad with, but you can also just grab a head of cabbage and chop it up. But when I'm busy, this is just a really quick lunch. So ideally, I'd love to do everything from scratch. I totally get why scratch is great. Sometimes I need a few convenience foods just to have on hand. So this is one of those. Lots of zucchini. These were on sale for a really good price. So I just got a few of these. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll make my family pasta that's gluten-free or regular pasta, depending. And then I will make zucchini stir fry fried in the pan with some butter and olive oil and garlic and then I'll put my sauce over zucchini just chopped up not even zoodles and it's a delicious substitute for pasta. Mini cucumbers, mushrooms, brussels sprouts, lots and lots of sweet potatoes. I'm still loving these. They're so good right now. Two bags of these apples. Little I believe these are pink lady apples. I love those. Lemons. I also picked up some more sumo oranges. These are so yummy. And then onions, I always have to have onions on hand. Ginger root. I always pick up berries. So I have two things of blackberries and one thing of organic blueberries here on the bottom. Organic restaurant style salsa. Some organic chips for my kids. They love that with salsa or anything like that. The jeweled dates, I love these for a little sweet treat. I picked up a few bags of gluten-free pasta and then organic jasmine brown rice and then just a bunch of organic beans and diced tomatoes and I also have some tomato sauce. So as you guys see, my kitchen is pretty small and it actually doesn't have a pantry in it and so I have put this little cabinet, it's kind of in my living room area off of the dining room and when I get home from doing my groceries, I usually try to put everything away. Even if my pantry is not perfectly organized, I'll just take a few minutes and I'll kind of straighten it up, put like things together just so that it's not so overwhelming, but I never have a perfect pantry and yet I still am able to cook delicious homemade meals for my family all the time. So if yours is like that too, don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it works and that's what matters. So I just like to start by taking off all of the rubber bands and any sort of packaging that my vegetables and fruits had this week and then I'll just fill up my sink with some water and I'll add in a splash of apple cider vinegar. This helps to get off any dirt and pesticides and so I'll just add everything in there at once and let it soak for a while and then I'll lay it out to dry. Since I don't like keeping a lot of snacks in the house for the kids, one thing I love to have is always having big bowls of fruit on my counter. This is great for snacks because we see it, we know it's there, and if they're hungry they can just reach and grab something and I think it's just a really foolproof way to make snacking a lot more healthy. Now while I'm in the kitchen, I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner started and tonight I'm making a cauliflower chicken alfredo. So I make it using cauliflower rice that you can get frozen. So it's super simple and super quick. So I'm just taking some chicken and I'm just seasoning it with what I call like my house seasoning, which is just salt, pepper, garlic powder. You can do onion powder too. And then I'm just gonna put some olive oil in my skillet and get that cooking and searing on both sides. It doesn't even have to be perfectly cooked through all the way because we're gonna end up putting this in the oven to bake it. I recently started switching my spices over to these cute little spice jars that I got. I usually have a big cabinet that's a mess and it's super hard to find the things that I cook with all the time. So I decided to just get these little jars. They're cute on the shelf, which I love, and it's easy access for the things that I use the most. So I am just putting some of the cumin that I got from the grocery store in bulk and putting that in my jar. 
and this is just real mom life here my daughter is 16 months old and she wanted me to hold her this day while I was doing this so this is how it goes it took me twice as long to take all the vegetables out of the sink but when your baby wants to be held you just hold them and so she's sitting here eating an apple while I do it and if I can do it so can you So once the chicken has a nice brown on both sides, I'm just going to add in some butter and then I let that melt and add in some heavy cream. And then I let that kind of cook down. I scrape all the little brown bits off of the bottom and that just adds tons of flavor to the sauce. And then I added a little bit of shredded Parmesan and this is kind of like a quick Alfredo. And then I just add in my cauliflower rice. It's actually still frozen. I don't even defrost it. I just kind of let it defrost in the pan. And then I'll cut up the chicken into bite size little bits or you could slice it up, whatever you want to do and then just add that back in and coat it in the sauce. Next you're going to want to dump it in a little baking dish and then I just top it with some more parmesan. You could even do mozzarella or something like that and then I just put it into the air fryer or the oven and let that cook until it's nice and brown and bubbly. Now I'm just getting my homemade chicken stock started and all I do for this is I put carrots, celery, onion, garlic, and I leave everything with the peel on and everything. I just chop it up a little bit and throw it in my instant pot and top it with my filtered water from the Berkey. And then I'll just add in some little drumsticks like I showed you guys earlier in the grocery haul. And we'll just let this cook overnight. Sometimes I'll go even like 30 hours, just leave it on there on slow cook and I'll press it again if I run out of time. And that's actually what happened to me this week. I was busy, it was the weekend, and so I just didn't get to it. So either I'll just press that button again and let it cook longer, or I'll take the pot out and put it in the fridge, and then I can come back and put it in the pot and warm it again before I strain it out so it's easy to strain. Something I like to do for my vegetables like green onions or asparagus is just put them in a little bit of water and this keeps them fresh for a lot longer. And you can also do that with herbs like parsley or cilantro. It works really well to extend the life and keep it fresh. Once my cauliflower chicken alfredo is done cooking, I just like to top it with a little bit of scallions. I think it adds a really good flavor and it's as simple as that. So the next morning I decided to get up nice and early before church and make the food that was for potluck. So I started out by taking some ground beef and I put that in my skillet to brown it up along with some onion and garlic. like to add my garlic in at the end so it doesn't burn so I added that in right at the end along with my mushrooms to get those kind of cooking down and then I added some gluten-free pasta into my stock pot with plenty of salt I'm going to add cream and sour cream to this sauce but I actually forgot that I used all my Parmesan cheese yesterday which was like a main component of this but I'm going to go ahead and add the cream and the sour cream and see how that tastes and I think it should be okay so I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then once my pasta is done I'm actually going to take some of the pasta water and I'm going to add that into my sauce and that's going to help thin it out without adding a ton of cream and it's going to help it stick to the pasta better so that's a good little trick. So after I added in my cream and sour cream, I just wanted to thin it out a little bit. So I added some of that pasta water and it's also going to help our pasta stick in the sauce and the sauce stick to the noodles, I guess. That's kind of what I'm saying here. So I always make sure before I dump out my pasta that I save and reserve some of that pasta water in case I need to use it in the sauce. Okay, so I didn't quite get to it the day that I made this and I just ended up putting it in the fridge and then I took it out this morning and put it back in here and just put it on warm. And now I'm gonna go ahead and strain it, put it in the jars so that I can have it later on this week for my soup. 
Making my own homemade stocks and broth is really something that I've gotten into this winter. It's so easy to do and it really is something that I always want to have on hand in my fridge. I think it tastes really good and it's so nourishing for you and hydrating, which I love. It's great for your skin and everything this time of year. And you guys, this is why I make my homemade stock because you can see by the color of this, it's just not the same as what you get at the grocery store. It's so much richer and so if I'm making a soup or something or even rice with it, I can add as much water as I need to and it still has a ton of flavor. And I also use glass jars to store it. You can use any sort of glass jar. I like to use wet jars or I'll use like an old honey jar that I had recently. I just rinsed it out and I'll reuse it. All right, so now I'm gonna start the curry that we're gonna have this week. Either it's just a soup or you could have it over brown rice too. And rule number one when you're cooking a curry is make sure that you wear an apron because whatever turmeric or curry powder touches will stain. And even though cast style soap will work a few miracles, you wanna make sure that you're not ruining your whole outfit. So I have my curry powder over here and then I also have some coconut milk and this is one that has no guar. So you wanna watch for those little added ingredients, especially things like gums. You'll see that a lot in things like almond milk. You wanna make sure that you get one that doesn't have that we don't want to have that it's bad for your digestion and then I also have a little can of coconut cream and this is just because I don't have a second can of coconut milk on hand right now so I'm gonna use one of these and just add either water or today I'm gonna to add the broth that I just made just because I have it on hand but you could do it either way so this recipe is a really easy one that I like to make frequently because one it's delicious of course but during the winter I love having warming meals that have really strong spices so like the curry powder and all the turmeric is really great to have and it's very anti-inflammatory so if you're looking for ways to sneak in those really powerful herbs like turmeric this is a great way to do it and you could actually use fresh turmeric as well but I'm gonna use my dried turmeric today and then I'm also gonna add some fresh ginger in so we're really packing in the nutrients and the flavor so I just started by preheating my cast iron pot and adding in some olive oil and get my onions sauteing and cooking down. Also when I'm cooking with turmeric, I like to use things like this to cook with because that turmeric tends to stain like my wooden spoon. So I like to use ones that have like a silicone or a rubber end and that way you don't stain them. Now I'm adding in my spices. Of course I'm using curry powder, black pepper, paprika, and some cumin. And then I'm also adding in plenty of salt so that there's tons of flavor throughout the whole dish. I just like to let all those spices come Kind of marry in the pan and start to toast and then I'll take some of my homemade chicken stock and I will add that in a little bit at a time and make kind of my own curry paste. I forgot but I also like to add in a little bit of chili powder too just to add a little bit more flavor. Next go ahead and add in your minced garlic along with your coconut cream and your coconut milk and the rest of your chicken stock or you could use vegetable stock that's kind of up to you here. Now to get that delicious curry flavor that we know and love, I like to add in a little bit of sugar and I like to use an organic coconut sugar or maple syrup. Sometimes I'll even do raisins as the sweetness here. And, and next I'm gonna add in some grated ginger. So I like to take the back of a spoon and just scrape that skin off. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And then I just use my microplane and start zesting that straight into the pot. If you don't have a microplane, you can also just slice it up and throw it in. Just warn your guests if you have anyone coming for dinner that there might be a chunk of ginger that they wanna watch for. Then I just add in a bag of frozen cauliflower and a bag of sugar snap peas and let that simmer. This curry is so delicious and addicting and full of the good stuff. It's just healthy fats and vegetables. I truly love it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Subscribe if you have not subscribed already and you guys can watch this video next.